How's it going guys? My name is Craig. Today I'm going to be talking some college football with y'all and I'm going to start with my team, my absolute favorite team, Oklahoma. I was born in Oklahoma City uh, and been following them my entire life, been a fan my entire life. Known the entire roster at least and since they've uh, been around since 1998. Uh, so I'm going to start off there. Um, definitely a great team this year like always. Uh, not exactly where I'd want them to be, and it's actually a pretty exciting situation now that they have a new head football coach, Bob Stoops, retired. Uh, Lincoln Riley's going to be at the helm. So far, recruiting's going great for them. They have uh, four uh, four-star commits going on right now, and those players, something cool, something I hadn't seen in uh, quite some time, those recruits are actually, after they sign, they hop on Twitter and they're just like, hey, uh, you guys, you guys come to OU, we're going to win a national title. You guys come here. 99% of the time, whenever a recruit signs or commits, they don't give a shit. They, they don't care uh, what happens after that. They only care about their playing time, what number they're going to get, what they're going to do, uh, their dorm, uh, <laughs> what the odds are of them going to a national championship or a bowl game. Um, but for, th for the first time in quite some time, these recruits are coming out and doing a recruiting job for the coaches. Uh, which is something very special, something very cool, and I certainly see that being adopted a lot more uh, with uh, uh, top five conference schools. Uh, I know I've seen USC do it. Uh, they've been doing it for actually for quite some time now, um, ever since OJ, actually. With that, let me go ahead and just dive into their season. Uh, they start off the season with uh, UTEP, University of Texas at El Paso. It's a great first game, a lot better than what they had last year. They kind of bit off more than they could chew with the University of Houston. Um, really bit them in the butt. That, that game really, it, it kind of screwed them the entire rest of the season. But it, there's a lot of positives you can take from that. They uh, tried their hardest to get the, get the best talent that they could, and uh, they made their mistakes early. That's that's one of the positives of playing a, a tough non-conference schedule early in the season. You got the entire rest of the season to make that up and potentially still make it into the playoff. They're going to be going into there. There's a lot of new talent that's going to be coming out. But they lost uh, Joe Mixon, Samaj P. Ryan. Uh, we're going to see what the new running back groups can do. It's kind of a running back by committee now. Definitely going to see what kind of role Kyler Murray's in, whether they're going to uh, keep him at quarterback and have him fight against Baker Mayfield for snaps or if we're going to see him slide over into like a slot wide receiver position. And he's got the speed and hands to do it, um, but I know his desired position is quarterback, and that's certainly what NFL scouts are looking for him to. Second game, not so, not so great. They play Ohio State at Ohio State. I actually see them losing this game. Ohio State still has JT Barrett. They still have a great core of receivers. They still have Bosa on their defensive line. Uh, Bosa, if you were if you watched the game last year, caused a lot of havoc in OU's backfield in Norman, which doesn't happen all that often. Whenever OU plays in Norman, they're usually just quick fire and uh, just move the ball down the field so easily. With Ohio State, this didn't happen. And I picked Ohio State. Actually, after the game last year, I picked Ohio State to win the national title. So uh, that one's going to be a little difficult. Again, I can't see them winning that. I believe they're going to start out the season 1-1. One and one. September 16th, they play Tulane at home. Uh, another easy non-conference. Uh, once again, I think Oklahoma. What I think they did with this schedule is, uh, by scheduling Tulane in their third game, they wanted to see what kind of mistakes that they make against Ohio State and correct them through and through. Put that to the test against a somewhat easy non-conference team and just correct them and be all set for their remaining of their uh, conference schedule, in which that opens up uh, a week after that. That opens up against Baylor. Now, Baylor, they're under a lot of scrutiny. There's a lot of distractions there. Um, they still have their head coach from last year, who actually did a pretty decent job. Uh, despite everything that he was faced, or that he uh, was faced with, he still did. He still did a, a remarkable job. I th I think Baylor's still going to actually be a decent team. They still have Seth Russell at quarterback. They still have a great, again, a great core of receivers. Uh, defense is a little shaky, which is something new actually for Baylor in the in the past. Ever since RG three, it's been a steady, uh, like a consistent 
well balanced defense that really wrecks havoc uh, for opposing offenses. I know that they use this to perfection against Texas, um, against te- Oklahoma State, Iowa State especially. Um, but I still think Oklahoma is going to come out on top of this. Uh, it's going to be difficult. It's actually going to be one of the closer conference games that Oklahoma has. But I think that they're going to be just fine. Two weeks after that, they play Iowa State. Easy conference game. They're playing at home. I don't see it. Man, I don't see Iowa State putting up more than 10 points, maybe. And I see Oklahoma probably putting up, not to toot my own horn, but I honestly see Oklahoma putting up about 30, 35 at least. And we're going to have a nice... It's going to be a nice little warm-up to the next week because the next week after that, we've got the annual Red River Showdown against Texas. Uh, Never know what to expect. Texas is actually ranked 23rd this year in the AP poll, something new that they haven't seen in quite some time. Uh, they got a nice little bit of swagger to them. New head football coach, Tom Herman, he's doing a bang-up job with recruiting. He's doing an amazing job. Um, you see his coaching staff really adhering to him. Players already love him. Uh, he's running a great camp. They got uh, brand new locker rooms. I don't know if you saw that. I believe it was a six million dollar project for their locker room, and it looks fantastic. Uh, players are certainly confident into this next year. If Texas actually, if Texas isn't as great, uh, if if Texas doesn't do well this year, you can certainly look for them to be conference champions within the next five years. If Tom Herman is consistent, Tom Herman then I could definitely see that. I could easily see that. And we might even see Texas and Oklahoma being the rivalry that it used to be back in the early 2000s where whoever won that game was kind of a shoe-in for a national title contention and more times than not ended up in the game. Um, I'm very excited to see that. So, yeah, we'll see what happens there. A week after that, Oklahoma plays Kansas State. As much as I'd love to say that Kansas State is an easy game, it never is. Uh, they always find a way to make it close. Uh, Bill Snyder always has a way about that. I, I, I don't know how he, he... He found the fountain of youth, and I don't know where the hell that is. But obviously he does. And he always keeps his team up to date, current. A lot of times what you see with these older head coaches, you see them uh, use the same style that they used back from the 90s and the 80s, even the 70s. With Bill Snyder, he adapts to what college football is now. And he makes sure that his team is in tune for it. And he does a great job. I mean, let us let us not forget Bob Stoops. He came from Kansas State. He was under Bill Snyder. He uh, Shortly after that, he went to uh, Florida. But he learned everything that he know, knew about uh, head coaching from Bill Snyder. Bill Snyder uh, really uh, got him set up and ready for that OU position that he excelled at, obviously, we saw. Uh, so yeah, definitely a big, uh, big game. Week after that, Oklahoma plays Texas Tech. Texas Tech, it's pretty much it's Baker Mayfield versus Lubbock. This is all I have to say. It's played in Norman this year, but still, um, there's still a lot of hate and animosity that, oh, Baker Mayfield left us for Oklahoma. I, and it's, it's so stupid. It, it, it really is. Y'all treated him like crap. Um, so, uh, as much as it's a game for Oklahoma to say, get into a better spot and a better, uh, position for the college football playoff, Texas Tech looks at it, looks at it as, oh, it's, 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 it, it's to show up Baker Mayfield it's to show up the university of Oklahoma. And eh, it's just silly, but I do see Oklahoma winning that one, uh, very handily, uh, probably in the 41 to 41 to 14, 41 21 range. Next week after that, we have Bedlam. Now, I don't know how many of you are actually from the state of Oklahoma, but Bedlam is a huge thing. Uh, they shut down businesses for it. The whole state gets ripped in half. I know you don't see it a lot on ESPN or uh, Fox or any any other sports channel like that, but that's seriously how it is. It's actually probably more serious of a rivalry than Texas and Oklahoma. There's a lot riding on it. Oklahoma State's always been that little brother that kind of nags you and just nitpicks you. They're all they're always looking to see how they can beat Oklahoma this up, upcoming year, and Oklahoma's just looking forward to maybe a playoff spot. 
Uh, now, Oklahoma State's actually ranked uh, 10th this year in the preseason AP poll. So that's 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 gonna be that's gonna be pretty uh, uh, pretty interesting. I know they have uh, Mason Rudolph coming back. I know a lot of NFL scouts think a whole lot of him, and uh, I think he's gonna do fairly well. Uh, it's gonna be a close one, very close one. We could see this one going into overtime like we did uh, a few years back. Uh, besides Ohio State, since this game's in Oklahoma State. I have to say, Oklahoma might lose this one. I, I it, it's certainly close. I certainly want them to, but they they just might. So we'll see how that goes. A uh, week after that, they play TCU in Norman. TCU uh, with Gary Patterson, always a tough team. They co- always come out of nowhere, even when they're unranked uh, and had a and had a terrible year, a terrible season. They always pick it up against Oklahoma. It's kind of annoying. It really is annoying. TCU, it's 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 going to be a tough draw. It, it really is on November 11th. Um, but I do I actually see Oklahoma coming out on top of that. After TCU plays Kansas, always a wash through. Never they haven't been a threat since 2009 when they had Reesing at quarterback. Um, and they actually almost went to the national championship that year. People forget Kansas almost went to the national championship. They went on to the Orange Bowl and won it. That was probably the brightest year of college football that they've ever had. They're always perennially a, a basketball school. But that one single year, they just rewrote everything, came together as a team. Ever since then, they've tried to recreate that, and it just does not work out uh, at all. In their last game, Oklahoma plays West Virginia at home. West Virginia is always a tough squad. They always have a tough team. Uh, Dana Holgerson always does a very good job of getting their team ready for uh, the Big 12 season. Uh, They're actually the team that is projected to play Oklahoma in the Big 12 championship, which is new again this year. They haven't had a Big 12 championship since 2010, and uh, West Virginia is projected to play Oklahoma Oklahoma there again so we could very we could very well see West Virginia versus Oklahoma and then the week after West Virginia versus Oklahoma for the conference for the conference championship so we'll see how that goes so at this point Oklahoma is looking at 11 and 2 it is very well possible that a two loss team could get into the college football playoff it almost happened last year with Michigan um, and if this holds true with that conference championship they do have a lot of uh, chips on the table where they can actually get into it. Um, the past three years, a lot of Big 12 teams were snubbed. You saw Baylor get snubbed. You saw TCU get snubbed. Uh, Oklahoma get snubbed uh, last year. And the biggest argument against that was, well, the Big 12 doesn't have a conference championship. Well, they do this year. It's being played on December 7th uh, at Cowboys Stadium, something I'd definitely love to go to. Uh, especially I'm pretty sure that Oklahoma is probably going to be in it. Um, and there's actually a pretty good chance that Oklahoma could see, if, if things get shooken up, there's a pretty good chance that Oklahoma could see Oklahoma State or Texas in the national championship. It's not – the Big 12 isn't uh, divided up into divisions anymore uh, where it used to be North versus South in their Big 12 championship. Now it's number one versus number two, and I absolutely love that because you could see another Red River shootout there. You could see another uh, Bedlam there. And that's certainly interesting, something definitely new, and it would be absolutely insane. All right, so with this uh, win-loss record for Oklahoma, I'd love to say that they're going to get into the college football playoff, and there's still a very good chance of that. Uh, But being realistic, uh, I could see them getting into one of the New Year's Day bowl uh, bowl games, uh, one of the outsiders, old BCS uh, old BCS bowl games. Um, honestly, I'll probably see them going to the orange bowl in which that's, 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 that's the number one bowl Oklahoma's ever gone to. It's they, they always go to it. They always excel at it. They won the 2000 national championship there. They won the 85 national championship there. They won the 75 national championship there. So it's, uh, they're definitely going to be comfortable if they get that bowl game. But, again, I'd certainly love to see him in the college football playoff. But, yeah, guys, that's all I have for the University of Oklahoma. Um, Certainly excited to see how this college football season pans out. It's going to be a very exciting one. Uh, You're going to have a lot of 
uh, non-conference games that are extremely exciting to watch. Uh, starts out week one, Alabama versus Florida State. That's number one versus number three. And uh, so the week after that, you got Oklahoma versus Ohio State in Columbus, Ohio. So ABC and College Game Day are going to have their hands full. But uh, anyways, anyways, guys, uh, go ahead and contact me on Twitter. Uh, my uh, Twitter handle is Craig S N C A A F B. Uh, definitely let me know what team, what your favorite team is, what school you went to. Uh, ask me some questions if you have them. Uh, I follow college football religiously. I'd love to talk college football with you, and I hope to see y'all very soon. Thank you.